Hey, welcome to 49cc Scoot. My name's Brent. In a prior video, I took a chunk out of my two-strokes piston after advancing ignition timing. There was also aluminum transfer and scoring in the cylinder. If you aren't familiar with the term, aluminum transfer is when aluminum from the piston winds up on the cylinder walls as a result of high temperatures and insufficient clearances. It looks a lot like cylinder damage, and it can make you think that the jug is trash, but sometimes it will come off and the cylinder is relatively unharmed beneath it. I haven't done a lot of cleanup to plated cylinders because I've spent so much of my time with cast iron bores over the years, so my first plan was to go straight to trying to clean up the cylinder with acid. Muriatic acid will dissolve aluminum, but shouldn't harm the hard plating on the cylinder. It's an acid, so it can be very harmful to us if in direct contact or from breathing the fumes, so you have to use safety gear like chemical resistant gloves, eye protection, and at least use it with plenty of fresh airflow or proper respiratory protection. Aside from that risk, it melts aluminum, and this is an aluminum cylinder. While the plating may be fine, great care has to be taken to avoid getting acid on anything but the transfer to be removed. If it winds up in a port or anywhere unplated, you may be throwing the cylinder away, so most use Q-tips to apply the acid very sparingly. I was all ready to go with this method when Tysta commented on my build thread on the 49ccscoot.com forum that you can ruin the cylinder if there is damage below the aluminum transfer. That makes sense because even minor scoring or a little porosity in the plating could be enough for acid to reach the aluminum behind it, and I'd think that even if damage wasn't obvious immediately, it could lead to farther damage of the plating that would end the useful life of the cylinder short of repair and replating, which can cost as much or more than a new cylinder. So, acid can make quick work of cylinder cleanup, but it has a lot of associated risk. The other popular method involves an abrasive and more effort, but much less risk, so I decided to start there instead, knowing that I could still try acid cleanup if it didn't work. I started out with these green Scotch-Brite scouring pads, cutting them into smaller pieces and using a little bit of dish soap and water as a lubricant. I picked this area to start because it wasn't the worst area and it was easy to reach, so it seemed like a good spot to see what I was in for. The idea is simple. You're just trying to sand away the aluminum with minimal effect to the cylinder plating. So you work the area with frequent checks so you don't sand any more away than you need to. Ideally, you would try to sand in directions emulating cross hatching. So if the abrasive did leave marks in the cylinder, they would at least be in a more desirable form but realistically, there is a lot of sanding to be done, and it can be tough to form a specific pattern in all spots, and you shouldn't create any significant damage with proper material and technique anyway. I started out using way too much soapy water and used less and less as I went. A little lubrication is good, and it can help to wash away debris, but I was losing too much friction and making the process take longer. After a few minutes of work, I cleaned the area to get a good look at it. It seemed like most of the transfer was gone, but I could still tell where it was. This could be residue left over, or it could be discoloration that's not going to come out. You can try to check by running a fingernail across it, or lightly with a scribing tool as I did, to see if you can feel a raised area that would indicate aluminum leftover, or indentations that may tell you that there's cylinder damage. I couldn't really feel anything, but I went over the area again briefly to see if it would improve. I could still see it, but I couldn't feel anything at all, so I moved on to the next spot. Each spot was pretty similar, but I did switch to maroon abrasive pads at times. Most areas could be done within a few minutes, with some of the larger spots taking longer. I cleaned everything thoroughly, including inside all of the ports, and then washed the cylinder with dish soap and water before wiping down the bore with WD-40 until I no longer saw any gray residue. I was left with scoring and porosity below a few areas, which makes me think it's probably a good thing that I didn't start off with acid cleaning. 
Obviously, I'd rather not have any imperfections in the plating, but I'm hoping that it's going to be just fine to use again. The next step for me was to take precise measurements of the bore to see how the engine failure and my sanding may have affected it. It was very cold at the time, so I took the cylinder and my tools in the house and let everything equalize to room temperature before measuring anything, so that way I'd have a more accurate comparison to past data. My last check was 800 miles ago when I replaced the piston due to wear, and most bore measurements have increased by one ten thousandth of an inch, but the thrust axis near the top of the cylinder that took the most damage is about three ten thousandths larger now, and went from concentric to now two ten thousandths out of round. It should be fine with a new oversized seat piston, just like it was using, and I'll just have to keep my fingers crossed that the plating isn't too thin in the worst spots and doesn't fail from what appears to be minor leftover damage. I have been told by some people that they would have tossed a racing kit like this by now with 2,965 miles on it, but I'd prefer saving a little money and trying to reuse it. Plus, I'd rather have a used kit like this in place while I'm trying to figure the tune out so I have ordered another C piston, but it's just been on back order for a bit now. Make sure you're subscribed and notifications are turned on so you don't miss future updates, and please give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or found it helpful. Thank you for watching.